Welcome. This is Political News and Political Views. I'm Corey Scott. And to my left here is D Mr. Dave Lillis. How y'all doing? Um, we haven't been on the air in quite a while. Um, uh, there's reasons for that one day. I'll get into it. But uh, it's nice to have you back. It's good to be back. And uh, one of the things, uh, before we start, I, I would like to... Um, say something about how and why I got involved in doing this show. When I was younger, and for those people that remember Channel 50, there used to be a show on called The Lou Gordon Show. And Lou Gordon would come on on the weekends. I, I remember when my, um, I asked my grandmother if I could watch the show, mm. and I, I think it was like 15 or 16. And she couldn't understand why I would watch a show like that. Mm. Lou Gordon would go into topics of politics and, and business and that, but he would have his information and he would find people not doing the right thing. I'm gonna be generous on that. And he would answer questions as to what was going on and why people did what they did. Mm -hmm. And the one thing that he had was his credibility. Now some people questioned it, mm -hmm. but they never proved it. With Lou Gordon, you could almost take what he said and take it to the bank. It was old school, back in the, the 60s and 70s, and, and I, I don't know if he ran up until the 80s. I believe he died in the 70s. I want to say around 1977. Mm -hmm. But I was so inspired by him. The other thing was, um, I just found out uh, one of my instructors, my teachers at uh, Boyne City High School, mm -hmm. has just recently died. Mm -hmm. And um, I went up three years ago and I thanked him for what he did for me. Because the first time I had him, I had him in a class called South American History. Now I knew where South America was, it was South, and that's about as far as I went. But this man made, made it so interesting. And then the next subject was Boyne City History, and the next subject was politics, and the next, but he did it where he, he made it where you wanted to know more. Mm -hmm. But the one thing, and all the teachers up there, at, at, and I'm gonna give kudos to Boyne City, and I wanna give kudos to Lake Orion schools because they did the same thing for my kids. Mm -hmm. They taught them how to think, not what to think. Meaning if somebody told me something, I had enough knowledge that I could look at it and say, mm, I'll buy that, or mm, something sounds funny, I need to check this out. But they didn't do the thinking for me. They allowed us to do it. One of our teachers had a class, he actually got in trouble for this. His name was uh, Dale Parsons. Two weeks out of the year in his math class, we did nothing but play chess. That sounds kind of funky, doesn't it? But think for a minute. What that did was it made you think. It made you look at the board, look at all the pieces, look at all the possibilities. And that's what we're missing now. I don't think people are thinking. They're letting people think for them and accept it and whatever happens in their life, because they didn't think, they have to live with it. And, and those that have talked about it, just walk away. Now, I don't know, I, I just see uh, stuff coming over TV and radio that is just so bizarre, and yet people buy into it. Don't even bother to check. Before I say something on this show, I try to check it out. Mm -hmm. And if I'm wrong, I will come back, and, I, and I've done this in the past. Mm -hmm. If I'm wrong, I'll come back and say, hey, you know something, I said such and such a thing, and I found out it wasn't true. Well, let me ask you this question, Dave. At what point do you think that this started um, with politics? Has it always been this way, or has it just come about within, I don't know, say the last eight, maybe, I don't know, 10, 12 years? Well, I think it's gotten worse in the last six years. Mm -hmm. However, I think in 2008, uh, a major change came about. And they say it was because of Obama. Mm -hmm. 
because he was black. Well, I'm sorry, but I, I live in a world where there's three types of people. I like you, I get along with you, or I hate your guts. It makes it real simple for me. But that's on an individual basis. I don't take an absolute of all of people are like this or all people like are like this. And yet that's what we do. Now, I've said I don't like Trump. And I don't. And I make no bones about it. However, I am, I do respect the Republican Party. I voted many times Republican. But the thing is, I could see through the bullshit. When you, when you say that, what type of things have they done to, I guess, make you feel the way that you do at this moment? Trump just lies. Mm -hmm. An outright lie. I mean, come on, I'm not that stupid. Mm -hmm. And I don't think the people out there are that stupid. At least I hope they're not. Is it, do you think this is more of a Trump thing or a media thing or both? Because the media brings out information, too, that um, I guess some can consider that it's... True. True. Um, and that, uh, I'll go back to what I said. I can think for myself. So I can watch Fox News. I can watch CNN, uh, MSNBC. Uh, Newsmax is, is wacko. I mean, they're... they're well, the way I feel about Trump is the way they feel about Trump mm -hmm. in the opposite. Mm -hmm. You know, they love the hell out of him. They, you know, they, I won't tell you how far they'll go, but, uh, you know, they, they have said on the show, you will not uh, disrespect my president. So th they've made their stand. But the thing is, for me, I can think for my own. Mm -hmm. I can listen to Fox News, and are they 100% wrong? No. Do I agree with a lot of what they say? No, not likely. <laughs> MSNBC, CNN, same thing. I will listen. I will learn to take, okay, this part I believe, but this part I think you went off the deep end. Mm -hmm. But I do that. Mm -hmm. If I don't know, I'm smart enough to check. I'm not going to let you run my life with what you say. I can think for myself. And that's what I think people need to do. Okay, listen to it assess it, and then determine what you think is right and wrong. And that's where I think that a lot of politicians have lost it. Yeah. The very essence of knowing the difference between right and wrong. They are doing things that are hurting people. Now, I think at one time when I was younger, uh, and that was many moons ago, uh, you respected police. You respected clergy. Politicians were someone you looked up to. Movie stars were something great. Sports stars. Well, what heroes do we have now? I, I, honestly, I can't name any. I, I mean, yeah. it's, there's, there's bits and pieces mm -hmm. of heroes mm -hmm. or instances, mm -hmm. but very few people that you can look up to and say, I, am, I want to emulate that man or that woman. There are some out there. And, and uh, I got to tell you one that uh, in past shows and in conversations, I have made fun of him, and that was Mike Pence. I wondered how Mike Pence kept his hair so white with his head up Trump's ass. <laughs> But knowing that there were other heads up there too, you know, I, I, I just figured, you know, maybe he got in the middle. Um, I think he believed that uh, you turned gay from sitting on the toilet seat. Um, he always looked, when he was with Trump, like he was having a... <laughs> An orgasm. <laughs> he, just, he just sat there like, uh. <laughs> but the thing was, he is a good man. I mean, because right now he would probably be considered a hero to many. To me, uh, because of January 6th. Trump has uh, again come out with and shown, you know, and I wish I could uh, bring it up on the, on the screen. Trump has had it drawn up. 
his face on Mount Rushmore to the left of Washington. And he still believes, and Christy Neom, believe it or not, is trying to get Trump's uh, bust on Mount Rushmore. He paid two people, one in France and one in another country, to nominate him, I think it was Poland, nominate him for a Nobel Peace Prize. Trump makes me laugh when he says, I united the country. Man, I just... <laughs> well, let's, let's think about that for a minute. Now, I'm not necessarily saying that he did, but to what, for what he believes in the people, in his loyalists, I guess in a sense he may have a point because he did unite a certain portion of... I'm sorry? Faction? Yeah. <laughs> I guess you could say that. Yeah. And, and, and so I, I guess that, that, that whole slogan would make America great again because for some people that, um, I guess what does that mean? Well. With, with, I, I, guess, I guess what that means to his, his fans or his loyalists uh, means something totally different to another well, group of people. Well, I'm going to go by uh, what Hillary Clinton said, and she was right. America was great. Mm -hmm. You didn't make it great again. You actually brought it down. And I would like to correct something, and I know this is going to come back to bite me in the ass, so I'm going to wear uh, two pairs of pants from now on, that uh, there is not a MAGA move it, movement with MAGAs. They are maggots. The plural of MAGA is maggots. You got that? Yes. Maggots. Wow. And Donald Trump does not belong in any way, shape, or form. I mean, if he wants to cut his picture out and put it on the postcard and send it to himself, bully for him. But I would say if somebody belongs there, it should be Mike Pence. Mike Pence was pressured, and tomorrow we are going to hear in the next uh, January 6th hearings just what Mike Pence went through. But this man investigated and looked into it and said, this is wrong. I cannot do this. Now, you know who would have had a chance to do that? Who was that? Al Gore. Mm -hmm. Al Gore was the vice president. Mm -hmm. Remember what happened with him? With the counting in mm -hmm. Florida? Yeah. If a vice president had the ability to do that, don't you think he could have done it? Yeah. And he was the vice president there. But he didn't. He followed the procedure and put it through the way it was supposed to be done. Now, he could have gone on and, and fought it further in the Supreme Court, but he didn't. He said, look, for the good of the country, I have to bow out. Now, he, that is, is someone that deserves a lot of credit, just the same as Pence. Mm -hmm. What do you think with all the testimony? Do you, do you honestly think that anything is going to happen to Trump at all? Is all this just a waste of time and just to get the, the people underneath him, the, the people are part of his administration that had knowledge of what was going on? Well, you, one thing I think is is for sure is uh, whatever happens, Trump's going to throw someone else under the bus. He's going to blame someone else because that's his M.O. But I, be, I believe, I, honestly, I, I, you don't, do you believe he's untouchable? Well, it's like this. They have said not to, uh, the only thing worse than not prosecuting Donald Trump to the ex, uh, fullest extent of the law is to do it. And here's why. Trump has his terrorist. Now, a lot of people don't like that term, but look what has happened with the Proud Boys. The, the Proud Boys and the Oath Keepers were in on this. Mm -hmm. They actually had the military weaponry to take over the Capitol, and in their uh, talking, that's exactly what they were going to do. They were going to do a coup. And they were doing it on behalf of Trump, and it's shown that Trump did have conversations with him. Now, they're trying to make it sound like, well, Trump was just up there and all this happened around him and he didn't know what was happening. Mm -hmm. Well, no, that's not true. So you think the, the Pence testimony would maybe okay. bring all this, all this to light, possibly? When Pence got up there, there is a uh, specific language that you say mm -hmm. when the procedure starts. Remember, that was only ceremonial. Mm -hmm. and Pence had no, he, he could not do what they said he could do. Mm -hmm. That's a fact. But what he did, he got up there and he changed the language, saying that I will only uh, call out legitimate 
electors. He knew what they had done. And he refused. They even, uh, um, Trump, uh, you know, as has been said, if Pence had gotten killed. Now, have you looked at the, the new films that have come out? No, I have not. It's unbelievable that people could be that vicious. They said there was no weapons there. There were weapons there. They said there was no takeover. There was a takeover. I'll give you an example. Ashley Babbitt. Okay, this has come up many, many times. She was the woman that got shot mm -hmm. and, and died. Now, she wasn't the only one. But my question to you is this. It has been proven over and over and over and over and over again that Trump lost. Now, he can stand there and say whatever he wants to say, but it is a fact that he lost. It has been gone over again and again and again with audits and in the courts. And the circumstances that have gone around this whole plan clearly show that this wasn't a set of circumstances that happened. These were coordinated. Mm -hmm. And we'll get into that different. But the thing was that, that with Pence, he stood up to that and he did check to verify that they were wrong. Mm -hmm. Mike Ludig, uh, Judge Ludig, will be speaking. He's a uh, uh, highly respected Republican judge, as was, uh, uh, he did talk with the, um, the vice president uh, under Bush, um, uh, his name escapes me right now, uh, also from uh, Indiana, and he just found out, no, you can't do this. Then, while all this was going on, while he was in the Capitol, he knew what was about to happen. They were trying to get him out of there. So when he made, they told him three times, you have to go. They were 100 feet from him. If they had gotten a hold of him, what do you think they would have done? Yeah, uh, because Trump's tweet was read on a loudspeaker while Pence was doing his job. And that was to attack Mike Pence. Now, they didn't say that directly, mm -hmm. but that's, and those people were out for blood. It was a mob gone wild, but it was part of the plan. Do you think that when you say that there is uh, evidence uh, related to him losing, is it just, uh, what, what do you think as far as, we know, you know, we watch the news, we, you know, we read, uh, you know, uh, things on the internet, so forth and so on. Mm -hmm. Why is it that Trump supporters refuse to give in to? Because he's their leader. He, for them to say that, then he loses. But Trump brings something to the table that I don't think people realize. He breeds hate. Mm -hmm. He breeds discourse. When he says, look what you're, they're doing to your president. Now, wait a minute. We don't have, we have a president who does a job, but we are committed to a constitution, which is the rules and the laws that we all abide by, that everybody has, is supposed to have, equal rights. We have a Constitution, the Declaration of Independence. All these were written for everybody. But with Trump, it's not that way. It's him. He's a victim. He's a martyr. And they look at him that way. But he allows, he justifies their reason to hate. Let's say that this goes the way that I don't want to just point you out, yeah. but a lot of people no, uh, do it. may want no, because I, I know how you really feel. You did say no, no, how no, you no, no. That, so, so let's just say things go the way that you know a lot of people hope it goes. Do you think that this is the end? Do you think this continues? Because I mean, he's I mean, because currently he is he will be running for uh, president well, again. He correct? planted a seed, and that seed has come to fruition. Mm -hmm. The the thing that. Um, 
really, uh, we have to start thinking about our democracy. Mm -hmm. And we're not. And that happened in Italy. It happened in North Korea. It happened in China. It happened in Russia. You, we don't know what we really have in our life. We assume it. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm supposed to have that. I'm supposed to get a good education. I'm supposed to get this. Well, you aren't supposed to get a damn thing. Nothing is guaranteed to you. We help each other. That's what made this country what it was supposed to be. Everybody was involved. Did we start out that way? No, we didn't. We preach a good story, but we had to learn our lessons. Unfortunately, that lesson spilled blood. What I say with Mike Pence, Mike Pence stood there knowing that if those people had gotten a hold of him, they'd have ripped them apart. I can't imagine what they would have done to Nancy Pelosi. Yeah. They probably would have uh, you know, roasted her in her fireplace and eaten her. I mean, if you listen to them and you look at them, they were out for blood. This was not a, a crowd that was angry. This was a crowd that was fuming. And that is scary. So with, this, with all this going on, what do you think the outside of them feeling that uh, Trump was cheated in the election, is it something that they felt maybe that was going to be taken away from them? Other than the fact that Trump was not elected, what was Trump doing for them to react the way that they did? I mean, he, he gave them the okay to feel and talk the way they do. Mm -hmm. There are people out there of all races, of all genders, mm -hmm. of all economic backgrounds, mm -hmm. that have a dislike for someone else. Right. That's why when I said I have three types of people. Well, see, the nice thing for that, and, and this is my own version, so take it for what it's worth. I ain't charging you for it. This is free and for nothing. I can look at a person, I can meet them, and I will assess them. Mm -hmm. And they're one of the three. Sometimes I have to step back and take a look. Sometimes I'm wrong. I met one guy that uh, during my career, uh, his name was Grady, I, I can use his whole name, but uh, Grady, the, when I first met him, I didn't like him. Mm. But I couldn't tell you why I didn't like him, I just didn't. And uh, so I stayed away from him. And he was a classmate. And then one day we sat down and we talked. And not only was he a good guy, but he ended up being my best man at my wedding. Oh, wow. And then there was another guy that I met. And, you know, I went up and talked to him a little bit, and I hated his guts. <laughs> and to this day, I still hate his guts. Mm -hmm. But that's my right. Mm -hmm. So you go ahead and you live your life. I'll live my life, and we'll exist. I don't have to like you. We don't have to go to the colonel, but we do have to exist. Okay, we had to do our jobs. So, okay, you don't have to like everybody, but you don't let somebody else tell you what you should do. And that's what Trump does. Do you think that social media plays a big role oh, hell yeah. in, into this as well? Yeah, yeah. I, I, mean, <laughs> <laughs> I was on Twitter for a very short time. Mm -hmm. And I have to admit, it's therapeutic. <laughs> How is it therapeutic? <laughs> because <laughs> you can tell somebody to go to hell and enjoy the trip. <laughs> you know, you get on there and, and you, you tweet something, press the button to send it, mm -hmm. but you wouldn't say it to that person's face because they'd probably bash it in. So in, in that respect, it's, you can go off the deep end mm -hmm. and, and say some. And, but uh, on the other hand, there are some very intelligent people on there. Yes, I, have, I have watched and, and looked on there. There are some people that come up with some points that you can learn. Mm -hmm. You can learn. But, Absolutely. Um, there are those, and, and I did it. I, I'm, I, I'm ashamed to say it, but I, I did, and, and I got punished for it. I got suspended. Um, I didn't think what I said was anything worse than what anybody else did, but mm -hmm. Twitter had their version, and they said, shame on you. You're suspended for 12, uh, 12 hours, and uh, 
you know, I was, I was filled with shame, you know. But um, can, can you can you repeat what you said on Twitter? Or? Yeah, I guess so. What the hell? You know, it was a long time ago. Trump had, uh, you know, California had all those fires. Right. Okay. A whole town mm -hmm. got wiped out by the fire. Right. The only thing left was a sign entering the town. There was no town there. And he came up with, uh, I'm not sending you any money until you sweep the forest and clean them up. And the governor, Newsom, said, what are you talking about? And he said, in Norway, Norway does not have a lot of forest fires because they get out there with their broom and dustpan and they sweep the forest. With the broom and dustpan. Yes, they get all the leaves and sticks up, and the forest floor is clean. So therefore, there isn't uh, nothing to start a fire. And he said the the president of Norway told him that. Okay. Well, the funny part was when the president of Norway came and was in the Oval Office talking with Trump on TV. One of the reporters, and I was so happy to see this. One of the reporters asked him about that, and he said. I never said that. And they said, well, President Trump said you told him. He said, up until this time, I've never spoken to that man. Like you said, he was in the, was in the Oval Office. Yeah, he was, he, was, he was getting ready to have a, a meeting with Trump on oh, TV. So Trump wasn't there at that yeah. moment. Okay. Yeah, he was, he was sitting over here, but Trump was talking to someone else, and the reporter. And they also showed a picture of uh, a lady in Norway with her uh, Eureka vacuum, you know, in the forest. So anyway. Uh, the following year, there were more fires, and Trump said that I'm not sending you any relief because you didn't do as I told you and sweep the forest floors. So, <laughs> I, I uh, put on there, why hasn't somebody shot that son of a bitch? And I crossed the line. Yeah, yeah. You so, did. I'm telling you, don't do that. I did it, it doesn't work. But you, okay. but you wanted it to happen. No, and, I didn't and, want no, it. No, I'm just joking. I didn't want, the thing was, I mean, you allowed California to burn and said right. you wouldn't do something. Right. That's crap. You want to be the president? Why do you want to be the president when you don't want to be the president of everybody? Just the ones that you like. All those people up there, the press, all the Democrats, all the transgender, all of this group, all of that group. Everyone's your enemy, except for the ones that are praising you constantly. And it's also been established that some of those people up there are paid. He tried to say the Democrats were doing it, and then they find out he's doing it. He's paying people to be up there. Mm. Now, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm bitching about Trump. Yes, Trump. And getting back to Biden, if anyone should be on Mount Rushmore, it should be Biden because you saved democracy. For how long? Who the hell knows? It could be gone a year from now. We don't know. Hopefully, people will, I'm, I'm going I'm to give you some advice. I'm going to give you some advice. I'm not charging you for this either. But this was something that was told to me by my boss one day. And he said, you know, we, we were talking at the table, and I probably was bitching the way I am now. And he said, David, you need to take two steps back and look at your life. Look good at it and you'll see your life is not that bad. So shut the hell up. Huh. And I've told my kids that, mm -hmm. and I go by that. Mm -hmm. I do that even now. Whenever I get to where I'm in a funky mood, take two steps back, look at everything. I have a nice home, I've got a job, I've got this, I've got this. You know something? My life is not that bad. It really isn't. I can make it that way. I can do something stupid. But I got enough sense that, that I can think on my own. But I do need to be kicked in the ass every now and then. We all do. Get us back on track. Yeah, we all can do some, some self-assessment. But the, the thing with Pence is, uh, Pence, they had a noose out there for him. Mm -hmm. They were going to try to get him in the car and take him to an Air Force base. That way, and this was part of the plan, it's called the Green Bay Suite. 
And I can't, I mean, we don't have enough time to go into detail on that. Maybe another show. But basically what it was is to get Pence out of there, and then the next person in line would have been Chuck Grassley, who was a Republican from Iowa. Chuck Grassley would have said that we, will, we can't count these votes because they were phony electors in seven states. Michigan, Pennsylvania, Georgia, uh, Wisconsin, uh, Arizona, New Mexico and Nevada were thrown in because they just had enough that it would have taken it down to where the vote would have had to have come from the, uh, the Congress. So, so at that point, would have, what would have taken place? Let's just say the Pence. Republicans would have won. They would have won by two votes. They, the, the Congress, the Senate, and the, the House would have voted, and the Republicans had two more votes and Trump would have been put back into power. Now, the reason for the people outside was so that when that happened, again, this is part of the Green Bay sweep, when that happened, Trump would have declared martial law because the Capitol was under siege. By declaring martial law, he would have taken over everything and he would have put a suspended Congress. There was a plan. All these things were coordinated. They didn't just happen. What amazes me is that these idiots in those seven states who did the phony electors, the Democrats won those states. For example, in Michigan, and this is on TV, these Republican electors and their lawyers came to the door and the captain of the state police came to the door and said, they said, we're here to sign the papers as an elector. And he said, they're already in there with the governor and the secretary of state and the attorney general. And they said, no, we're the Republican re electors. We won this state. And they have to do it on the grounds of the Capitol in all states in order to make it legitimate. So they wanted to go in and sign. Well, Trump didn't win Michigan. He lost it by over 150,000 votes. And there was recount after recount after recount. It was checked by a committee, four Republicans and one Democrat, and found that there was no fraud. They went to the courts, Giuliani and all the others, they found no fraud. Trump swears it's here. So does Mike Lindell. Mike Lindell needs to stop sniffing his pillows. But. They found no fraud. Now, these people who signed those phony electors, they sent them in to the government. And they were issued out, and Pence knew that they were false. And he said, I'm not going to do that. But you know what amazes me about these people? If you lie on your income tax, you're going to do some time. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. If you send a document in like that, that's fraud. These people put themselves in line for a five to 14 year sentence. How stupid can you be? You know, some people are, are considered, and I hate to say it like this, but some people are, are considered above the law. You look at athletes, entertainers, uh, politicians. You know, that I honestly feel that uh, you know, we. I'll just say, I, 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 like I said, I think Trump is untouchable. I believe he's untouchable. I think if this, uh, I feel like if this goes in the way that Trump would be convicted, I feel like we really are going to have a big problem on our hands. Yes, because he's already got his, his yeah. uh, the, the Proud Boys, these militia groups. Yeah. You know, and, and people need to take this into consideration because. Uh, look what happened in Idaho just this past week. They, they backed up a U-Haul with 31 people yeah. in there in military garb and guns to go to a LGBT. Is, is this what we want? I mean, it's one thing we talk about gun control and that, but wait a minute now, do we have terrorist control? Mm -hmm. Now, if, if Trump gets away with it, well, then that sets precedent. Now, the first impeachment was perfectly legitimate. Now, I know people have said it was fraudulent. No, it was not. There was a quid pro quo. Two of the witnesses said we heard it. 
There was more information. But Mitch McConnell had gone in there in that first uh, impeachment and said two weeks before, you can do whatever you want. We are not impeaching this president, so just go through the motions and have yourself a good time. And that's what they did. And some of them came back afterwards, like uh, uh, the senator from uh, Tennessee, and he said, and, and uh, the one from Maine, Susan Collins, and said, well, you know, he, he might have been guilty, but let, let's let the voters decide. Okay, you'll let the voters decide. And look what he did. All that did was give him more immunity than the second one. Clearly guilty. Clearly guilty. Now, getting back to Ashley Babbitt, uh, this is an example of what happened. Okay, at this particular moment, if Trump has absolute proof, bring it forward. Mike Lindell, bring it forward. Arizona, bring it forward. Arizona did a, a bullshit audit with the cyber ninjas who never did anything like that. Mm -hmm. And now they see through the emails what was going on. This was all orchestrated. Mm -hmm. You know what the cyber ninjas found? Biden had 300 more votes. Well, in Arizona. In Arizona. 300 more than what he had before they started. Do you know what Trump said right after that? See, I told you I won. No, he, he really Yes, he <laughs> did. After they found out he had 300 more votes. Correct. He stood up there on the podium and said, see, I told you I won. They found it for me. No, they didn't. He's delusional. Okay, now, I'm speaking about Trump, okay? Now, that's him. I'm not speaking about the Republican Party. What we have to understand, and this is going to take a long time, there is a difference now between Reagan, Bush, uh, Roosevelt, Ford, Republicans, mm -hmm. the Republican old guard, and Trumpsters, and Trumpism. Trumpism is an offshoot of fascism. Trumpism actually should now be in the dictionary. Trump did start Trumpism. So break that down for me if you can. Trumpism is an offshoot of communism and fascism and Nazism. It's a fascist ideal. It's an autocracy and an oligarchy, similar to Russia. As a matter of fact, this war in, in as far as I'm concerned, this war in Ukraine, mm -hmm. take a good look at Russia. Take a good look at Russia. That's what you're look, asking for. That is an autocracy. And with an autocracy, what happens is, in, in our system of government, you have three branches that are equal. And they can check on one another. That's how they set it up. Mm -hmm. The judicial can check on the Congress. The Congress can check on the president. The president can check on both of them. Everybody's checking on everyone. So, you know, don't try to pull a fast one because we're going to catch you, which is how we set it up. And we set it up for a reason. So what happens in an autocracy, and you can see how Trump will do it. And I'll tell you how. When he first became president, remember he had five generals? Mm -hmm. And he was praising my five generals and, and all the people that he put in place. Do you know how many of them went out of there in disgrace and are being sued now? How many? <laughs> About 30. But he found out something. And uh, there's a couple of people, uh, um, Sebastian Gorka, uh, Stephen Miller. Stephen Miller is dangerous as hell. Steve Bannon is dangerous as hell. These are dangerous human beings. They found for Trump that instead of putting a secretary of a department in, they would have to be vetted to see if they met the criteria. They would have to go through Congress and be voted in. He found out that he could have temps in there. They would last for a year and a half and they answer only to him, and they do not have to be approved by Congress. And he did that towards the end of his term. The Secretary of Defense was a temporary, but he answered only to Trump. And that's when Trump started talking about starting a war with Iran. And then when that backed off, he wanted to start one with China. And uh, 
General Milley had to go through and call China and say, look, you're going to start hearing some things. It's not going to happen. Call me. I will make sure that we stay on. Because Trump was actually talking about starting a war with China to stay in power. For some reason, he thought that if he, there was a war going on, that he stayed. No. Hell, I mean, look at the, uh, Lincoln almost lost his position. Uh, Lyndon Johnson did lose his position to Nixon. A war does not... Uh, Guarantee you, yeah. Yeah. So, what happens in an autocracy is that the executive branch moves above the judicial mm -hmm. and the congressional, or the, the, the legislative. Okay, at that point, the president is the king, the leader, the autocrat, the dictator. That is what Putin is. Now, he has a Congress, but he tells them what to do. He has elections. Now, we sit here and we uh, chastise him about his elections, how phony they are, and China, and uh, North Korea, and, and uh, uh, Egypt, and this one, and this one. We sit here and complain about them, and we're just about ready to do it to ourselves. Now, we not only will be an autocracy, we will be part ol uh, oligarchy. Mm -hmm. And that is where the rich has so much power that they actually run the country. They tell you what your wages are going to be, what you're going to have, whether you're going to have insurance and schools and all of this. And they pay tribute to the autocrat. So if you look at Putin and you see what he does, all those, the one guy had a seven hundred million dollar yacht. That's half a cruise ship. A seven hundred million. Seven hundred million dollar yacht. And there, these yachts were all over. The, the United States has been confiscating them hmm. and their money. Uh, Putin is worth about two hundred billion dollars. And it's all over the world. Mm -hmm. You know where a lot of it is? <laughs> and this is amazing. A lot of it is in South Dakota. How's that? No one can figure that out. South Dakota's rules for banking seem to be different. The problem is they put them in phony names. So now the federal government has to tie those names to the oligarch that has them. Which can take, yeah. can take some time. It can take a long time. Yeah. So Putin doesn't have his money in Russia. He's got it all over the world. Well, now with all these sanctions on him, his money is tied up. He can't leave now because if he leaves Russia, there's war crimes against him. Once he leaves the sanctity of his country mm -hmm. he's under arrest he can be tried for war crimes oh wow so what do you think the end result is going to be with this war or how long do you think it's honestly in your opinion that war that it will last the, the war that's out there and this is one time trump told the truth this is one time he told the truth he said that if he was in power that war would not be going on and he's 100% right. How do you? How do you he know? would have pulled us out of NATO, which is, he was going to do anyway. He wasn't going to do it in the first term. He was going to do it in the second. Because if he did it in the first term, that would have hurt him politically. So he was going to do it in the second, where he was allegedly a lame duck, and then declared that he was going to stay in power. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing that, that uh, they did in North Korea, and in China, and in Russia. Uh, uh, Putin's put himself into... Uh, power until 2032. He put himself in power until yes, 20... Yes, until 2032. So then what happens that? Well, he'll probably be dead by then. <laughs> How he picked that year, I don't know, yeah. but that, that's what he, he picked. Yeah. And Trump was going to do the same thing. So if Trump had pulled us out of NATO, which he, he said he was going to do it, he said it right up on the podium in, at one of his rallies, that's what he was going to do. Russia would have marched in and just taken it over, hands down. Uh, uh, Ukraine would not have had a chance. And Ukraine was, now he would have been right on the border of Poland and, and Czechoslovakia and all the other countries, Hungary. But see, he could, he could cross into there because without the United States, mm -hmm. NATO could not have, they could have survived for a while. But once Putin had incorporated Ukraine into his army, and then Belarus and the other, Georgia and the other countries around him, he would have marched in and started taking over Poland and all these other countries. So in, in respect, yes, that would have been uh, Putin's three-day war. Hmm. Wow. 
Wow. Now, people have to understand something. NATO, they, they kept saying NATO, the other countries weren't paying their fair share. Well, the agreement was you pay a percentage of your gross national product. Okay, take a country like uh, Luxembourg or, or, or uh, the Netherlands or you couldn't say England because England's a pretty um, uh, big country. But you take it with some of the other countries and put it up against the United States, well, duh. What the hell do you think is going to happen? But Trump and, and uh, Obama, Obama said too, you know, can you guys help out a little more? Mm -hmm. Obama's approach was a little different. Trump said, I'm going to pull out. You people have to give more money. Well, so they did. And he, he took credit for that. But he threatened to leave them standing. He knew what Russia was going to do or what Russia could do. Oh, yeah. You know, there was a, a picture, and, and I wish we could bring it up on the screen. Whenever Trump talked with Putin, there was never any Americans allowed in the area. Really? He did not want anyone to hear what was going on. An interpreter, yes. Mm -hmm. And there was one picture where the two of them, Putin was on the left and Trump was on the right, and allegedly the conversation went like this. And because there's no, no, no record of it, written or otherwise, mm -hmm. you have to take it for what maybe with a grain of salt. Right. Maybe it happened, maybe it didn't. But apparently Trump was bragging about my army, my military, is the most powerful in the world. Nobody can stand up to my military. You know, it was his. Mm -hmm. He doesn't pay for it, but it's his. So Putin just sat there. So he said, I have weapons. And Trump said, oh, are you talking about the, what, your supersonic or ultrasonic uh, weapons? And, no. I don't need any missiles. I don't need nuclear weapons. I have the best weapon. And Trump, what do you mean? And he looked him square in the eye and he said, I have you. And he just smiled and Trump put his hands between his legs. You can see that part of the conversation. Hmm. And he put his hands, put his head down. So, so what do you think he meant by saying that he has Trump? Well, as it was the weapon. same thing with Trump. Trump was uh, imploding the country. Hmm. He was doing... He was trying to turn the country into an oligarchy. He was stealing. I mean, uh, they've just, you know, I made a mistake. Now, I'm going to correct the mistake that I made. And that was, I said on this show that Trump had uh, collected $125 million right after the election. Well, it wasn't $125 million. It was more. It was $250 million, <laughs> a quarter of a billion dollars. He had people donate to him to help him fight the stolen election, $250 million people sent to him and he still has it. Even during his campaigns, he was filtering money out to his family. I'll give you an example. When he ran for office, he put his uh, uh, campaign headquarters in Trump Tower and raised the rent four times what it was and then paid himself. I do remember reading about that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then, uh, Melania didn't want to go there. So he took, uh, New York had to quarantine the three block radius around Trump Tower because she was there. She would not go to the White House. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't, she said it was because a baron was in school. The truth of the matter was, and it has come out, she renegotiated her prenuptial agreement. And that's fine. That, that, that's not the argument here. The argument here is Trump took $120 million and, out of taxpayer money and paid New York for her protection. Taxpayer money. You're a billionaire. You pay it. She should have had her ass in the White House. The fact that she stayed there, that's not my problem. I don't want my tax money paying for her. You pay for it. The thing is... There was something else that people didn't know. 
and, and, and fact check me. Go ahead and fact check me. Go to YouTube. Go to the news stations. You go to Fox News and they'll tell you this is true. Trump quit the Republican Party on January 20th. Why did he quit the Republican Party? Because they didn't defend him and they didn't keep him in office. So he told uh, um, so Ronald Romney mm -hmm. that you can take it and shove it. So is he independent? Or oh, no. What she said was, well, if you're going to do that, all that money you're going to give back to us and you're going to give us the donor list. Well, they came to an agreement. Now, I said he collected $250 million for defense of the loss of the election, correct? Correct. You know who's paying his legal fees right now? Who's that? The RNC. The Republican National Committee right now is paying all his legal fees pre-presidential. That's the agreement. He told the people right after that, do not send the money to the RNC. Send it directly to Make America Great Again. Again. Fact. So they can actually pay his legal fees. They are paying his legal fees. So, I mean, fees. is that, I mean, obviously it's... They can do whatever they, they want with the money. Yeah. Now, the thing is, right now, he does not have to report that money because he is not running. This is in a super PAC. Comes under different rules. Mm -hmm. Now, he's paying himself for some of his vacant space in Trump Tower. Fact check me. Please fact check me. Three hundred and some thousand dollars a month for a vacant area that there's nothing in. He's siphoning money off. He still is going to his golf courses, which the Secret Service has to go to, and they stay in the rooms there, $660 a night. And that money's going into his pocket. Over $3 million in Mar-a-Lago. He went down one out of five days at his golf courses. And he said about Obama, all he did was golf, 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 golf. You don't even know how to say golf. One out of every five days. Fact check me. You know, when he went down there, the Secret Service, all those, well, a, a president goes with an entourage, a president. Now, not, uh, right now, he's not making as much money. Mm -hmm. A president goes with 250 to 280 people. Well, when they travel with him, they got to stay somewhere. Right. Where do they stay? With him, in his golf course. And what does he do? The taxpayers pay for that. We pay for it. It's not paid for out of the Secret Service pocket. That's taxpayer money. Well, I don't know. I, I'm not taking up for Trump, but I feel like if I was president, I'd probably go off as much as he did, too. I mean, it is a stressful job. You, got, you have to admit. Uh, okay. Um, running for office, mm -hmm. I have done. Mm -hmm. And I have lost. I lost <laughs> a lot. And most of the time when I called my opponent to congratulate them, mm -hmm. Most were gracious. Dr. Um, Sweeta was, was very gracious, and I was happy for him, mm -hmm. even though I lost. Others were less than that. Wouldn't even call me a fool for running. Well, after you congratulated. Mm hmm. Yeah. And then what he did was he sold out his district. What do you mean he sold out his district? He did some work for the Speaker of the Senate mm -hmm. in getting the prevailing wage law down and passing other bills that this guy wanted put through. Mm -hmm. You sold out your district for your own personal gain. And his personal gain was instead of running for state senate, mm -hmm. he's now on the Liquor Control Commission. Mm -hmm. He parlayed that into a better job. Mm -hmm. Others have done the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's how I can now look to Mike Pence and say, yeah, there were some things I thought you were kind of crazy about, but I have a lot of respect for you. And I believe that Mike Pence, if anyone should belong on, on for what you did, you belong on Mount Rushmore. You put your life on the line 
to save democracy. You knew the difference between right and wrong. And I'll tell you this, I'll, I'll go this far. If Mike Pence decides to run, I would consider it, voting for him. Really? Just, yes. ba just based off? You know the difference between right and wrong. There is no president out there that you are going to find perfect. Mm, no. None. No. However, what this man did, and it's, it's, it's a simple thing, know the difference between right and wrong. How hard is that? Well, it, I think me and you talked about this. We, we, have con we had conversations about um, when you were running for office, how you, wouldn't, you would not take or you refused to take uh, donations from you know, yes. all these corporations because of what they would expect of you. And I think being, in a, being a president, I think, I don't know, he's still under the Trump umbrella to me. It's just almost like Bill Belichick and his, his coaches. They, they're, they, still, well, they, they, they still run their teams the way that Bill Belichick would do. And I, and I, I have a feeling that anyone under Trump's regime, so to speak, would maybe probably try to run the country the same way. I, I, I mean, I'm not saying 100%. I I'm just could saying, agree with that except this. Trump, they badgered him. Mm -hmm. They badgered his family. Mm -hmm. And he stood strong. And the Secret Service, when they came to, they knew the day before that something might happen to him. Mm -hmm. And it was reported to the Secret Service. What we didn't know was that there were people in the Secret Service that were on Trump's entourage mm -hmm. that were in on it with uh, Pence's entourage. Mm -hmm. And Pence's ch chief of staff, Mark Short, knew that. And that's why, and this just recently came out, they wanted him to get in the car and go. And Pence said, I'm not getting in that car. He knew. He knew that they were going to get, he didn't know where you'd end up. They said he couldn't have ended up in Alaska. But they were going to get him out of there so that the Green Bay sweep would go through because they knew he wouldn't do it. They did have a backup plan, but he stood strong. And for that, that took a lot of guts. Mm -hmm. He saved our democracy. For how long? Who knows? Mm -hmm. But he knew the difference between right and wrong, and he put his very life on the line. Because if you look at those films, if they had gotten a hold of him, mm -hmm. I can't even imagine what they would have done. I don't know. I, I, I agree with you to a certain extent. I just still feel like, you know, he's he was under Trump, and I still feel like there are some things that he will still do, you know, as far as like the, the Trump way, so to speak. <sighs> I mean, I don't know. And he may, let's say if he did run, I mean, would, we're, we're almost done. Okay, would people really vote for him because of, I mean, I may, maybe, maybe because of what you're talking about, maybe, maybe he, will, he will get the vote. Like I said, I, I think he's a decent man. Mm -hmm. I, it, I think he really cares about people. Mm -hmm. Am I 100% sold on him? No, but I'm not 100% sold on any of them. Yeah. yeah. But we're going to have to uh, run this next time. Okay. So. Want to close this out? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, I, didn't, I didn't have a heart attack. I didn't have a stroke. I was a little worried. I was a little worried. <laughs> I have to perform CPR on you no. a couple times. So go ahead and close this out. All right. I am Corey Scott. This is Dave Lillis. This has been the Political News and Political Views, and we will see you next time.